This is a demonstration of the wireframe prototype developed to show what a web-based drafting tool might look like. We start with user journey one, which explores what creating a new project might be like. This screen allows the user to select the type of legislation um, to be created and to add some metadata. In this case, we want to create an act of the Scottish Parliament, um, security level restricted, um, it's to be a public bill, and the short title of the bill is the microchipping of dogs bill. Um, the screen also enables the capture of information about who is drafting it and which member of parliament the bill would be introduced by. After entering the information, the user would click Create Project. And this takes us straight in to the structure view of the bill. Bills are often large and complex documents. However, they exhibit a tight hierarchical structure. In developing this prototype, therefore, we explored the idea that there could be two views of the same bill which the user could switch between at any time in order to help them draft the bill. The two views are on the one hand the structure view which is shown here which enables the user to build up and manipulate the structure of the bill and the editor view where the user can see the actual text of the bill either a segment of it or the whole bill. Here we can see the structure of an empty bill as it's been created. It has only the elements uh, that would need to be in a bill um, from the beginning. As you can see, the bill therefore has one section because every bill must have at least one section. The user would then be able to edit section title by clicking and typing there on section one. If the user wants to create more sections, you can do so uh, by clicking the buttons here at the top of the structure um, tab. So if I click section, you'll see here the section two appears. Um, and then if I decide that I actually want the bill to be split into two parts, you press part. And here you see the system has inserted not just one part, but two parts. Um, this is because um, if a bill is split into parts, it must have at least two. Um, this is demonstrating how the system might use its understanding of the underlying schema to assist the user in keeping the structure um, of the bill compliant as they create it. Having created these two parts, the user would then be able to edit uh, the titles of the parts and the sections. And there we see how quickly the user has started to build up the outline structure of the bill. Now, if the user wants to edit the bill, they then click on the element which they want to edit. Now, here the user can choose uh, at which level of the bill um, he wants to edit. He could edit the section, or he might want to edit a whole part, or he could edit the whole bill. In this case, we want to edit part one. So we click on part one, and here you can see we've now moved to the editor tab. What is envisaged here is a WYSIWYG uh, XML text editor that would enable the user to edit the text um, of the bill. Here you can see the two sections um, of part one that have already been created and the title um, and there are placeholders for where the text of the sections would go. Um, now if the user wishes to edit section one they would click on the body text and you see the cursor appears here and they would then be able to type um, some text straight in there. A key thing that we wanted to explore in the editor window was ways in which the drafting tool could help the user by suggesting 
what the user might want to do next, depending on the context of where the cursor was in the text. The buttons at the top right are therefore giving valid steps that the user might want to take. In this case, by clicking on subsection, the text that the user had previously typed in becomes subsection 1, and again, applying the rules of the schema, the tool has automatically created a second subsection because there must be at least two subsections in a single section. Now, as the user continues to type, um, the options at the top of the text box change depending on the context. And here it is showing um, possible things that the user might want to insert um, in the next line. They may wish to insert a paragraph or a definition or an unnumbered list, or by clicking on more, they could bring up the full catalogue of elements that they might want to insert. In this case, we want to insert a definition. So I click definition and the cursor moves on to the next line. The user is then able to enter a definition. And again, the options here at the edge of the text box change dependent on the context. Although this tool is envisaged as working uh, in a browser, uh, it would often be useful for the user to be able to work in a very simple text editor with no screen clutter. So there's an option here for full screen working, which shows most of the other detail um, of the tool removed so the drafter can concentrate um, on the text. And when they want to go back to the more general view, clicking on default view takes us back there. Now, although the user is working in the editor window uh, just now, the structure view is still present. And as mentioned before, these are just two representations of the same information. So if the user decides that they want to edit section two's title, by clicking on it um, and say they change it to exemptions, you'll notice that the same change um, is made to the structure pane. Um, likewise, if the user continues to add a new section within the editor window, again, the structure pane is updated. Let's now have a look at journey two, which explores working on an existing project. Here we see a list of all the bills that are currently in the system and we can see that as well as um, bills, um, it may also be including subordinate legislation. Here's an SI and here's the Scotland Act Amendment Order SSI. In this case, we want to continue working on the microchipping of dogs bill. So we open that and here we have a dashboard showing various bits of metadata about the bill um, but in this case we're interested in editing the bill itself so we click on edit bill and we're taken back to the structure pane showing the bill as it stands at present. It's envisaged that the drafting tool would enable multiple drafters to be working on the same bill. To facilitate that there needs to be a means of checking elements of the bill in and out here you can see a padlock next to section 4 indicating that someone else is working on this section at the moment. By clicking the drop down menu we see that this is currently checked out to Tony Smith. In this case we want to work on part 1 of the bill so we click on the, the menu there and we're able to select check out and now you'll see there is a pencil next to each um, element within part 1 showing that it's checked out to us and we can now edit it. The structure view provides um, a way of accessing various functionality related to the bill. As mentioned before, it can be used to structure and restructure um, the bill as the drafting goes along. So in this case, um, I want section two to be after section three, so I can just drag it um, and drop it 
to have the desired effect. Um, the structure pane could also be used to access information about versioning. Here, by clicking on the drop-down next to section 3, we're able to select the version history, and we are now taken to a view which shows the current version of section 3, but by using the timeline at the top, we can select older versions. Going back to the previous version, uh, below is the text here showing what the version of the section was, and there's further information here about when that version was re released. We now have the option to revert to this version, or to compare to latest, or to see comments. By clicking on compare to latest, we see a track changes version showing the difference between the current version of section 3 and the historic version. Um, and when we're finished with the version history, we click close, and that takes us back to the structure view. One thing that comes up sometimes when drafting legislation is the need to prepare alternative versions of the same provision. Here we can do that by selecting the drop down next to the section we want to create an alternative version for and choosing create alternative. And you can see now that there are two versions uh, of the same section and the user will be able to go in and edit these sections separately and then may at a later date want to select the second version as actually being the primary version. From this view of the bill, you can also export the bill to PDF or some other format. Clicking on Export Version, we now see the full list of provisions in the bill, and we can either export the whole bill or select particular provisions to export, and at the same time, the tool can also prepare uh, versions comparing the current version to previous versions and the user would then click on export as PDF to prepare a PDF. We can now look at journey 3 which explores some possible tools to help in viewing parts of the bill or other legislation and searching existing legislation databases. Here we are again on the structure view of the bill and we can see that part one has already been checked out um, to the user. This time we're going to go into section three which is on exemptions um, and here at the right you'll see there is a tools menu and from that menu um, we can select first of all multi-view. Um, this gives us uh, an extra column here and enables us to view things on screen without losing the primary focus on the text that we are working on. In this case, it enables us to view parts of the bill by dragging them from the structure pane. So by dragging section 4 and dropping it here, we're able to view the text of section 4 in case that's relevant to the work that we're doing on section 3. When we're finished looking at section 4, we can close this view by selecting the menu and choosing hide tools and we're back to the main editor window. Now looking at the other tool available from that menu, uh, which is the ability to search legislation.gov.uk. I now type into the title box dangerous dogs, click search and it gives me the results for all acts with dangerous dogs in their title. In this case I'm interested in the 1991 Act and here I'm presented with um, a list of the contents of that Act um, and if I was interested in seeing section 6 I can click on section 6 and here it shows me the text and it also gives me the ability to create a cross-reference in the editor window where my cursor is. So by clicking cross-reference that creates a reference to section 6 of the Dangerous Dogs Act in subsection 2. We can now look at journey 4 which explores cross-referencing. Um, here we are again at the structure view. This time we're interested in looking at section 4 on failure to chip dogs. 
and here we've moved into the editor view and you can see the user has already typed a person who fails to comply with. The user now wants to insert a cross-reference to section 1. You can do this now by going to the structure pane and right-clicking on section 1 which brings a pop-up menu and by selecting insert cross-reference to this. By clicking on that a cross-reference is inserted into the text. Now in this case it might not be the whole section that the user wants to refer to but an element within that section so the user could right click on the cross reference there and here we have another pop up showing the contents of that section so the user can further refine the cross reference. In this case it is subsection 1 that the reference should actually be to so we click there and the cross reference is amended to say section 1 subsection 1. After inserting the cross reference to section 1 1 the user continues to type further text in the editor window including subsection 2 which says a person who commits an offence under and now the user wishes to insert a cross reference within this section to subsection 1 and one way the user can do that is by taking their cursor up to the subsection 1 number and you see here that the xref button pops up next to that by clicking on that a cross reference to subsection 1 is inserted we can now look at journey 5 which explores an alternative approach to cross-referencing. From the structure view this time we select part 1 and here we have part 1 in the editor window um, and here the user is editing section 2 subsection 1 and wants to insert a cross-reference here to section 1. So the user types in section 1 and here you can see the system automatically recognizes that as a cross-reference and prompts the user to select an exact target for their reference. So here it's subsection 1 and there the text is turned into a cross-reference to section 1 1. The user continues to type further text into section 2, creating a new subsection 2, and this time the user wants to insert a cross-reference back to subsection 1, so they type in subsection 1. Here the complication is, is this could be a cross-reference to subsection 1 of this section, or potentially it could be a cross-reference to subsection 1 of another section. So here the pop-up is giving the user the choice of selecting subsection 1 of this section or of section 1 which is the other section showing on this screen and a likely candidate for the cross-reference or the user could type in a particular section number to which they want to refer. In this case it's this section so we click this section and the cross-reference is recognised as a cross-reference to subsection 1 of section 2. I now want to look at inserting a cross-reference to a provision in another act rather than within the bill that we're working in. So in this case the user has made further changes to this text and in section 1 subsection 2 has created a definition which states dog includes any dog to which and in this case the user is wanting to insert a cross-reference to uh, another piece of dangerous dogs legislation. So the user could bring up the legislation.gov.uk search box um, and then one way in which the user might insert the cross-reference is to use a shorthand form where they type in the year of the act, the chapter number of the act, the element that they want to refer to and its number um, and once I finish typing that you can see at the right that the tool has automatically picked up that that's a reference to section 1 um, of the Dangerous Dogs 1991 Act and it's showing the text there and then by clicking create cross-reference 
I can convert that shorthand reference into a proper cross-reference to the 1991 Act. We can now look at Journey 6, which explores an alternative means that a drafter could use to create textual amendments of other legislation. This time we're interested in Section 5. And here we are in the editor window and you can see we have a blank section. Rather than directly typing the amendment in, the user could select from the tools menu the create textual amendment option. This brings up the legislation search box and the user can search again for dangerous dogs legislation. Um, and Again, this time the user wants to make an amendment to the 1991 Act um, and it is Section 6 that's to be amended. So the user clicks on Section 6 and this shows the current text of Section 6 and we can then click on Amend this section. This brings in the existing text of Section 6 into the editor window. The user could then make whatever changes to Section 6 that he or she wants to. So here we can see the user has made a couple of changes including replacing 16 with 18 and deleting some text towards the end of the sentence. And here the system is showing it in track changes mode to highlight the changes that have been made. If the user is finished with the changes you can then click create amendment and that takes those changes and transforms it into the standard form of a textual amendment in a bill.